Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Scamfish presented by socialcatfish.com. On today's episode, we speak to a woman named Joan who turned to online dating after the death of her husband. She was messaged on the app Our Time by a man who claimed his name was Roger. After getting to know each other for months, Joan ended up falling in love with Roger. Over the course of the relationship, Roger needed money for countless issues he was going through. Joan ended up dishing out over a half a million dollars to help the man she thought she was in love with. Today, we will listen to Joan's story and try to find closure for her. Real quick, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. My name is Joan. I am a realtor. I was widowed in 2016 after being with my husband for 56 years. I met him at 14. My whole life I, w I was with him. So again, I lost him March of 2016. January of 2021, I had moved a few weeks prior to that. And I lost the presence feeling of him in this new condo that I moved into. At my other home, I always felt him around me because we had a summer place in Florida and we had a little cottage on the beach. Beginning of January, I felt so lonely and I've heard a few people say, go online, you can probably meet somebody. And that's what I did. And I just, just wanted to meet somebody to go out for coffee with, maybe I want to go to a show with, just chat with, a shoulder to lean on kind of. I went on to our time. I paid for the subscription too. It was around February, just before Valentine's Day. They had a special, so I paid for that special. Oh my God, uh, I think the second day, this gentleman approached me, and I believe his name was Roger Love. And he said he, he liked my profile. Could we chat? So I responded back. And then the next one was his time was running out, and could we? chat via email, which I said yes. He had lost his wife and daughter in 2018. They both passed within three weeks of each other. He was left broke. He told me he was a minor by trade and he wanted to get back on his feet. was a Vietnam veteran and he sent me an article that he was interviewed from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Ohio. And oh my God, it was such a touching story. So I had all these things to believe that he was really truthful. So upon our first meeting, he would send me the most beautiful, beautiful love notes. I mean, I used to tell him, you should work for Hallmark or you should be a, a writer. What are your colors? What do you like? What is your perfume? What's your favorite perfume? How do you like to dress? What do you like to eat? And um, he would answer all these things on his own. And we kind of had like um, a mutual thing going on. We kind of liked almost the same things. I just, my heart broke for him. He just sounded so down to earth between the love notes, between the sad life he had growing up, him taking care of his wife. It was like, that told me everything I needed to know. Anybody that could take care of a wife from 2002, not walk away from her and not cheat on her, it's just beyond my comprehension because I know today a lot of men would have just walked away and closed the door, even women and their husbands. Right away when he first asked me for money, I hung up on him because, again, we went from emailing to texting to phone. The minute he asked me for money, I hung up. He called me back. He kept calling back, calling back. I would not answer the phone. I don't know, maybe the fifth time. I don't know why I did. I picked it up and he's crying, crying. He needed to get on his feet. So that was the beginning of that one, I believe was $2,800. I have it all documented. Well, it went on to be a substantial amount of money. I'm going to say close to 500,000, which I'm sick over. He's stuck in Dubai right now. He went from Ohio to Alaska mining for gemstones. The gemstones were of such value that he had to go to Dubai where all the gemstones were shipped because of the value of them. And he had to make sure, show proof, they were his gemstones, so. Oh baby, what a nightmare. I wish you would just come home from Alaska. I mean it, I wish you would just come home. Oh God. I know, but you know, this is, this is not something I planned or you planned. Calm down. 
I know. I didn't know it was not the Jew. It never did, though. But you know, it's something we need to resolve everything. That started it. And again, I'm sending money, I'm sending money, I'm sending money, and my light bulb doesn't go off. I sent money when he had malaria. Then he comes down with appendicitis and a hernia. They will not operate on him till he sends $66,000. That was the Saturday. Now on the Sunday, I had my family here. It was my son's birthday. My grandchildren, the spouses were here. I'm like, I was gonna tell them. And I said, oh God, I can't tell them with all the families here. On the Monday, I took a ride over to my son's house. He was alone. My daughter-in-law was at a soccer game. So my son was off, it was a holiday. And I told my son, he said, mom, that I reported to the police. And I said, all right, Joey, you please tell the girls. So I called the police right from his house. I went to the police station. My son joined me later. And I'm so thankful my kids have forgiven me. I never knew how well off my husband left me. I had quite a bit of money in my checking and savings account. And I had sold a Florida house after my husband passed away. I took money from an annuity that we had, my husband and I had. So they're gone. Uh, I'm left, I was left with um, like $12,000 to my name after this nightmare. So now I'm gonna get myself back into the groove. Um, I got myself a little part-time job at a, one of the local markets here, because I wanna start putting back what I feel as though I took for my children and my grandchildren, which would have been theirs. But anyway, so. I'm, uh, I'm coming back slowly but surely, you know, and not only the loss of the money, but you get it, you fall in love with these people. So I felt like I had another loss. I felt like I had another death. But I know I'll get through this with the help of God and my family. So thank you, Catfish, whatever you can do to see if, what is the story behind this. And I'm hoping I can share this with the police. The police locally got involved and they did not um, do anything, nothing, nothing. And the money went to, all the money was sent, I sent wired, wired, cashier's checks, cash, bang, what's wrong with me? Oh God. And it all went to the same address in Texas, which I've learned is the money mule. The money mule gets that money, keeps a certain percentage, and must send it in Bitcoin because originally he wanted Bitcoin from me. I was like, I don't even go there because I don't even know what that is. So that's how we got to the cash wiring cashier's checks. And I've got all my receipts here. The police have copies of everything. Homeland Security, you know, I touch base with them, but maybe they can't tell me what their investigation is doing, but... The local police detective said, yeah, stay in touch with him. We'd like to set up a sting on him. So I'm not getting anywhere, but I'd be very interested to see if Lenny found out anything. And thank you guys so much. And everybody praise Catfish. And I wish I knew of it. And I'm going to be spreading my word a lot. So. After we received this video message from Joan, our search specialist Lenny got to work to find answers. She used the tools on our site, socialcatfish.com, to verify this mysterious man, Roger, and all of his friends and family, and got results in minutes. If you're looking to verify your online lover, the first step would be to use the tools on our site. You can click the link in our bio and check them out. Just hitting like, comment, and subscribe helps us build more tools out for you to use in the future. Hi, June. Hey, Lenny, I can't wait to see if you've uncovered anything. All right. Well, I'm just going to go through this, um, Joan. One of the things that was unique to your case is the scammer's name is Roger Posgay. So Mr. Posgay is a real person. He lives at the address that you had. You found an interview with him, and mm -hmm. they were doing historical interviews about the Vietnam War. So the statistics in that interview matched the, the, the location and things that the scammer told you. But one thing about this interview is there are pictures of Mr. Posgay on that interview, and they do not match the photos that you had of the wow. scammer by the same name. Wow. And that's something wow. that you looked for. He had a story to tell. It was a story that his daughter, Rebecca, had died 
his wife, Julie, had died. And you actually had the obituaries that supported that. Yeah. I looked into these two women and I did, didn't find any social media. I wanted to see what they looked like. I wanted to see what they were about. But the daughter, I did find social media for her. I found a new photo of her. And on her public media, there is a picture of her with who I think is probably her mother. So this is real, the real Roger Posgay, his real family. And so a lot, what this scammer has done is he has stolen this man's name. He has stolen his family. He has stolen his stories, and he's using it in this way. Wow. And it's pretty clever, really, because oh. when you found those obituaries, you thought it's he's on the level. These, oh God, this, yeah. this is right. One of the things that they do, and one of their goals are with that, is people who are God-fearing, especially on faith-based dating sites, they're there because there's an assumed trust that you have with someone who believes the same way you do. Yeah. And so that's one of the ways that he deceived you as well. Oh, God, yes. I have a customs document here. So he was sending these gemstones. He sent you this document to say... They're on their way. Let's face it. We don't deal with customs every day, do we? <laughs> the average person, we don't know how they they work. We don't know what they're going to ask of us. We don't know what kind of um, threats we might get from a customs officer. And in this case, this customs form is in Arabic. And so we just kind of think, well, it's a different country. They know what they're doing. We're just going to put that on trust. Whenever you see a document like this, the form is blurry, but what he has written in is sharp. That's a good indicator that this form has lost some of its quality through scanning or taking a photo of the form, and then he has just used a word text editor to put in this form. Wow. So it is a fake document. I loved, Joan, that you shared an audio with us. Ah. <laughs> oh, baby, what a nightmare. I wish you would just come home from Alaska. I mean it. I wish you would just come home. Oh, God. I know, baby, but you know, this is, this is not something I plan or you plan. Calm down. I know. I didn't plan it. It's not the cue. It never did, though. What kind of accident do you feel that this is? Um, well, you know, because only because I've been watching a lot of catfishing shows and scam bait and this bait and that bait. And I'm going to guess Nigeria or India. Yeah, it is. It is an African accent for sure. Oh. In Africa, they have all kinds of dialects. French, German, kind of a melting pot for language. The victim will say. I heard his voice, but it kind of sounds German, or it kind of has a little French to it. I'm I'm sure that it's real. These are tricks, and it is a lie. So yeah, I was really glad that you gave us that. That's great. Oh yeah. I want to talk about the images. I ran all of your images, and the first image that I had success with Joan was the image I had of him with this young man sitting beside him in a restaurant. Yes, that's supposed to be his grandson. Okay, supposed to be his grandson. All right, I ran this photo and I found an image of the grandson. And the image is from a photo booth at a party. He has a sombrero on, he's there with friends, they're having a great time at this party. The photographer there was in Sacramento, California. The next photo that I got success with was the one of him standing by this other man in front of an American flag. His name is Brian Mast, and okay. he's a public figure. And once you know his name, if you Google it, it's everywhere. Wow. So I'm trying to consider, so why would this man have this photo? He probably saw him. He said, could I have a picture? You know, whatever the circumstance, he's a public figure standing beside the person that is supposed okay. to be Roger. Finally, I want to talk to you about this person that you sent money to. Yes. Oh, the one in Texas. Yes. Oh, yes. And it's Dolores. <laughs> this is a legitimate address. This, wow. 
this is a legitimate phone number. You think she's involved? So I, I believe that she is acting as a middleman or a mule. For some reason, she may be wittingly doing it. She may be unwittingly doing it, but she's a legitimate person with a bank account. And if she is, if she has been motivated to do this for someone, she either knows what she's doing or another way that this happens, she's 84, 86 years old right. from what I found. So right. she same. may be doing this in ignorance. She may have been scammed herself. And someone has said, you know, your money's gone, but this is a way that you have that I can assure that you get some back. I have an attorney looking into my bank why they didn't suspect fraud. So much money coming in one day and out the next day. One day it was 150000 and um, 60000 I had cash. 45 was cashier's check. 45 was cashier's check. All one. I believe to her address that she that he gave me two different names to go to the to make out the cashier's check, but they got mailed to her. To her address. Yeah. So something's got to be done about this stuff. The bank should be like something's got to be done. I mean, I can't believe it. I'm so. I mean, yeah, I'm stupid. I was just so in love. I was swept off my feet. I was like, how could this? This is too good to be true. One of my 88 year old friends said that to me. <laughs> she was so cute. That's too good. <laughs> true you know because i'd say it's this is too good to be true but that feels Uh, flattering at the time that this is too good to be true right my husband never talked to me like this right it's like oh my god and i love my husband you know oh god yeah so the loneliness is terrible it's just terrible levi you know but i'm okay yeah my kids have forgiven me you know so because they kept saying to me, Mom, you're not, he's not asking for money, is he? I just wouldn't answer them. I'm trying not to lie. Even my priest. I told my priest he was going to be marrying us. <laughs> my priest yeah. warned me too, but uh, right over my head, you know. So you think he's out of Africa? I think he most likely is. Her number. Wasn't that traced to Alabama? I've run those numbers, and they're what's called a VoIP number. They're numbers that are generated by a computer or they're generated by design. Anyone can sign up for them. They can have the uh, custom country code. They can have a custom area code. If yeah, he says that he was, you know, a lot of times even like military, they'll say, yeah, I grew up in Alabama. And that's why my phone number's like that. You know, they, they make it that way, but really it's not a number that can be traced. It's not a number that's published. They're always evolving. They're always changing. And this photo may be a new one that's just emerging that we might find more and more people are going to be. Just amazing. God bless you all with you too. Thank you so much. God bless you too. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks for watching another episode of Scamfish presented by socialcatfish.com. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time. Scams come in so many different forms. If you have been a victim of any of the scams below, please email us at sharemystory at socialcatfish.com. We'll get to the bottom of it with help from our Social Catfish team. By sharing your story with our YouTube audience, we can educate, spread awareness, and maybe someday we can put an end to these scams.